All right, this is a viewer warning. If you have carburetors and you're worried about wiring your car, you might want to look away because there's a lot of wires in this episode and a lot of stuff that you're going to have to pay very close attention to. All right, so let's jump in to putting the connectors on. If you've watched my uh, DJET harness video, uh, this is gonna be very familiar, um, but I'm really trying to do it even nicer than I did last time. Connector, here are the pens. I've already done one. I uh, put a piece of heat shrink on, slid the boot on, slid that all the way up, made my connection, slid it down, and heat shrunk it. So uh, basically this boot is gonna be, uh, cover the connection completely on the injector. I'm not gonna say that's necessary, but uh, I think it does work pretty well. So here's what we're dealing with. Uh, first thing, we're gonna take off this tape. Uh, this is just really a placeholder. I am heat shrinking at the connector end um, because there's really no other wires that could need to come here. And if it does, then we'll figure that out. So I've cut them to equal length here. Gotta get some automatic strippers. You only need a very small amount stripped off. I'm talking maybe quarter of an inch, maybe even a little less than a quarter of an inch on these. Make sure that the little pieces that you've stripped off fall out because otherwise it jams up. So I've got my pieces stripped back here. Now I did go ahead and make myself a diagram so all the injectors are the same, not that it matters. I want the positive red on the left and the blue and trace or whatever it is on the right. So that's our guide. So we've got our boot, our connector, and let's go ahead and get out two pins for the injector. Now, like I said, these are an old school style deal. Um, if I could put a modern injector, that might change how easy it is to do this or how well these connectors connect, but they do work. I am making nice tight crimps with my rollover crimpers. Um, and I'll show you that as best as I can on the camera here. So uh, I'm gonna get my wire laid in there, the sheathing on the back pair and the wire on the front pair. And I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this in nice and tight. So I kind of just know which jaws on mine that it works. Get it nice and square, roll that thing down, and it's nice and tight. So then I'll go up to the uh, two sizes up or one size up, crimp it around the sheath. And then I always like to give it just a good little tug to make sure that that is feeling good. So there is our completed crimp. And we will do the same thing on the other side. So I try to make sure that the wires are straight and not twisted. I don't know if that matters. But that's just my habit. I lay that in there and I kind of pinch it with my fingers so that I can take my rollover, come across, get to that connection. For these pins, I'm using the uh, 20 to 18 gauge. Um, and we know we're running 20 gauge here, so I think that's perfect. Then on the sheath, I use this outer edge one, which is... Uh, 16 to 14. So there are my two crimps. I am satisfied that they are nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut off maybe an inch or a little more than an inch of heat shrink. We're gonna get that on there first. Heat shrink first, get that all the way over this Insultherm wire insulation. Next we'll do the boot. I probably should have done the boot first, but that's okay. So uh, we got our boot on there and I am gonna take the boot and I'm gonna slide it as far back as it's gonna let me go here uh, so that we can get room to pin these in. So I'm gonna pull this way back and then I'll take my connector. Now, these connectors, you've gotta be very careful that the tang goes in the right spot. Ask me why I've ordered three sets of these. You get the tang the other way and you will have to destroy these to get the wires out. And if you're doing this with a stock G-Jet harness, you'll lose so much length that it gets really hard to get them connected. So. With my diagram, I want red on the left, tang up to match that groove and listen for that satisfying click. Blue on the right, tang up, click. And you can see they do have a little bit of wiggle room in there. You probably can't see that. Um, and so then I'm gonna take my boot, get it fairly close to the edge, not all the way to the edge. And then I'm gonna get my heat shrink here 
and I just kind of pull the wire sheeting to make sure that it's not all bunched up or gathered up. And then we'll give it a quick heat and this will be ready to be plugged into an injector. So I've mentioned this before, one of the reasons uh, I'm using these injectors is nice tight connection. Uh, I've already had them rebuilt. Uh, I had some clogged injector problems and I already had them rebuilt. They are good to go. And from my research and looking at the CCs, they will flow way more than I'm gonna need. So my first two connections done, and I'll be honest, I'm super happy with how this is turning out. I'm gonna work my way across. I am skipping the connections under the air box. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe do the injectors on the other side, and then we'll take a look at the crank trigger and some of those other sensors. So I'll do those injectors, and I'll grab you guys as soon as we get to the next different connector. Next kind of connector, this is for our coil. Uh, it's labeled amp connector. Uh, I've already done one here and I'll show you the differences. So ideally you've put this little grommet or this little seal over the wire before you cut it. I tend to forget to do that because this is really the first time I've used this type of connector. So a little bit of twist can get it where it needs to be, um, but you're basically just gonna have to get this over the wire uh, and it'd be helpful if you put it the correct way. The skinny part goes towards the end that you're crimping. So we're gonna get this over the wire here and I'll show you how to crimp one and then we will get it all put in the connector. So once I've gotten that passed, I'm gonna just pull it up a little bit so I have a little room to work with. And I tend to, like I said, straighten out my wires so they're nice and straight. So grab your connector, lay it in here like normal. Let's get our first rollover crimp done. For these I am using the 20 to 18 gauge, make sure that's nice and tight. And here's where the difference is. That is nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and get my seal pulled up here and into the tangs that hold the sheath of the wire. And you may wanna squeeze them in by hand a little bit. And then I use the largest of my rollover crimps, the 16 to 14, because we're just trying to pinch this in place here. So we'll go ahead and pinch that in place. And feel it roll over. You don't need to get crazy with these because they are just kind of holding it in place. Give it a tug and then these will go into the connector. One thing to note, the connector pins are horizontal. So unlike those ones we did with the uh, uh, DJAC connector, you need to make sure that they go in like this up. So for my connection, I've got two ignition outputs. Uh, I'm gonna put one ignition output on each side I'm gonna put my red power wire in the middle. So we'll go ahead and slide that red one in there uh, in just a second. I wanna go ahead and crimp that last one. We'll click it in and then we'll be in business. There you go. That is our amp style connector. All my connectors slid in nice and tight. Man, these connectors have come a long way since the D-Jet style. Uh, I now wish those injectors had a different connection on it. So uh, that is the way that this one works. Uh, the other one that we need to take a look at is what I would call the Delphi. I had to do this one as a test because honestly, I've never done this before. Um, so I've got one other Delphi to show you that we will do here in a few minutes. Uh, but for now, let's jump on and do the crank trigger, uh, which is a completely different style again. So uh, we're getting our workout in mental and crimping tools. So let's take a look at the crank trigger. Now we're gonna do the crank trigger. Uh, so this one is also different. These pins get crimped. They go in through an existing weather connection. And then you put this wedge in the front and lock them in place. So this is actually gonna be pretty easy here. I have both my um, Haltech wiring diagram here and my diagram from the dub shop. So from the dub shop side, red is gonna be uh, your five volt or 12 volt. Black is gonna be the uh, sensor ground and white is gonna be the sensor output. That's what's on the car side. From the Haltech side, red will go to red, that's easy. Blue will be your signal ground, which will go to the black, the center connector and yellow, um, the positive on the sensor or the crank trigger positive will go to the black white that's on the far right. I believe I got that correct. The nice thing is 
These are super easy to rearrange. So let's go ahead and crimp one of these on here. This time I am not going to forget to put my heat shrink in place first, as I did with some of the other ones here. Um, but we'll go ahead and put a piece of heat shrink on there and make sure that this is nice and happy and then crimp it. All right, so I realized I was saying that it probably didn't make sense. On the car side, the crank trigger has red, black, white. From the Haltech side, that's power, ground, signal. On the Haltech side, we have red, blue, and yellow. Red to red, power, super easy. Blue is the sensor ground, that's the black. Yellow is the sensor output, that's gonna go to white. As I said, these guys are pretty simple to put in. You take your connector, you push it in through the back nice and gently until it seats all the way. You'll hear it click. Then we'll put our blue in the middle. Sometimes it helps to have something to push these with instead of just your fingers. Blue in the middle, there's the click, and yellow on the right. Push the yellow in, nice and straight, until we get that satisfying click. We're not there yet. So you can see that they've all gotten up to the front here, and this is where your lock comes into play. This is going to keep all of your connectors aligned, happy, and in their home. So this is gonna go in just like this. Obviously I've got them a little bit out of place here, um, but this lock is gonna go in and create um, an exact match for the other side. And so let's see if I can get this in here. Okay, we're back. I just pulled it out, reseated it, and that went in place. So once that is in place, holds the wires in, We'll throw our heat shrink up here, get it nice and tight, nice and secure, and these guys will be good to go. So, all right, that's where we're gonna leave off for tonight. Uh, we've gotten most of our connectors on. Really, there's uh, a couple left that need to be done that uh, are not in their final home. And so we've gotta turn our attention over to some mechanical work and some machine work and to get that TPS set up. So stay tuned to the next episode. We're gonna get that TPS block of aluminum machined and mounted to the car. As always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage right here on YouTube. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you think about our wiring setup. I've never done anything like this before, but uh, I hope it's helpful for you guys. Uh, between episodes, don't forget to follow us at Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. See ya.